So Seth Moulton was on Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC, and he apparently is not for Medicare for all. He's for a, he's not for a single payer program. And Lawrence O'Donnell asked him about it, and this is what he had to say. And then we're going to go over why uh, this is definitely what he has to say is uh, a horrible idea, and it and it's a common idea, and it's something that we need to be able to combat. So I'm going to give you all of the ways that we will combat this horrible idea. Here it is. I'm the only candidate in this race who actually gets single payer health care because I made a commitment to continue going to the VA when I was elected to Congress. I said, as long as my fellow vets are going there, I'm going to go there too because we know it's a broken mm -hmm. system. And I'll tell you, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. There are some things the VA does well, like they negotiate prescription drug prices. Medicare could learn a lesson from that. Mm -hmm. Medicare doesn't do that. So VA prescription well, prices Medicare's are lower. Well, Medicare is prevented by law from doing Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Would you but, change that law? Oh, I, well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I would also not force Americans onto a government plan designed in 1963 if they don't want to give up their private health care plan. And why? Because I think competition is good. I think competition is good. So you'd open Medicare to people who want to use Exactly. It. This is exactly what President Obama called for in a public option, mm -hmm. a public option that competes against private options. And you know what? If it competes them out of business, then so be it. But the point is competition brings down prices for everybody. I think about the U.S. Postal Service. I mean, does anyone, if the next president went to Congress and said, we are going to put UPS and FedEx out of business so they no longer compete with the U.S. postal system, is there any American who thinks that that would be good, that that would improve efficiency or lower prices? No, I mean, just in the same way that competition is good for delivering packages, Competition is good for delivering health care. And I, and I say that knowing what it's like to get single payer health care, to sit in VA waiting rooms where people have literally died waiting to get care. Uh, I, the first time I got surgery at the VA, they sent me home with the wrong medications. So we got to do better than that. And I think that's what the American people want. Okay. Um, first of all, the VA is not only single payer health care, but it's also socialized medicine. And nobody is talking about socialized medicine, not even Bernie Sanders, the person that everybody thinks is the biggest socialist in the race. Nobody is talking about socialized medicine. What that means is you, okay, single payer means one entity is paying for all of the bills for a, a certain demographic of people. So what we're wanting in this country is for the government to take on uh, that responsibility, essentially, and negotiate the drug prices, negotiate the, the service prices. And basically, everybody is in the same insurance pool, and the government is the one paying out uh, the, the providers. That is single payer. Yes, the VA is also a single payer program in a way, but the VA also on top of that single payer provides all of the medical services. So the government is owning the hospitals, owning the clinics, paying the doctors, paying the nurses, paying the providers. That is very different than Medicare for all. Medicare does not operate like that. Medicare is a government insurance plan, but all of the hospitals and all of the doctors and all of the clinics are private. They run themselves. They are not run by the government. So first of all, Seth Moulton is wrong right then and there, out of the gate. The VA is a different system than what we are proposing. The majority of us are saying we just want the government help the government to, to pay for the health care because they're in they're going to pay less. They're gonna do what they can to lower the prices. We're not saying we want to go to government doctors and hospitals. Um, secondly, you know, on the surface, his argument sounds fine, right? When he says, oh, the Postal Service, nobody wants to just go to the Postal Service to have packages delivered. We like to have the option of UPS and FedEx and all of that. Yes, that is true. We do like to have those options. So when he talks about competition, um, I think that resonates with a lot of people. A lot of people hear that and they think, yeah, I like competition. Competition makes things better. Here's the problem. Nobody really cares about the competition of the health insurance company. You don't care if you have a great insurance company, the person who files your paperwork. You're not sitting there thinking, wow, they filed that paperwork way faster than this other company filed the paperwork. It, no, you're looking for a great doctor. You want a great hospital. You want a great clinic. You want great care, not great insurance necessarily. Um, so the competition really is more about within the hospitals, within the doc amongst the doctors, the clinics, the hospitals. The actual care is where we want that competition to be focused, not on the insurance. So, um, so there's uh, you know that. 
and and I think that's where people get really confused. And I think that's where most people are starting to use this argument. They say, why not? I, competition is healthy. That is true. But nobody cares about their insurance. They care about their doctors. So right now what we've got actually is you are very limited when you select an insurance plan, which many people don't even get to select their insurance plan. Their insurance is provided by their employer. So most people actually have very little choice and there's very little competition going on. Your boss tells you which provider they're allowing you to, uh, which uh, insurance provider they're going to offer you as an employee. Then inside of that insurance provider, they tell you which doctors, hospitals, and clinics are in their network. So you don't have all the choice in the world. You actually get a very limited choice. When we have Medicare for All, actually all the choices open up. If every hospital, every doctor, every clinic is all going to accept the Medicare for All system, because that's the only system to accept, then you as a patient get to pick anybody. There is nowhere that's going to say, no, sorry, we don't accept your insurance. Because they do. There's only one insurance company. So actually eliminating all the private insurance companies creates more competition because now you get to go to any hospital, any doctor, any clinic, any provider. That is why it is so much better for competition. Now, there are some downsides. We'd have to work on how do we incentivize hospitals, clinics, doctors, providers to perform better. And there are ways that we could come up with that. We're, we're clever. We're smart people, aren't we? You know, this is the United States. Like, I feel like we've done some good things in the world and we've been very innovative. So I think we could probably innovate a way to ensure that these hospitals, these doctors, these clinics, these providers are all competing in a way that they provide excellent, exceptional care. Um, so, you know, right now we're working in a very limited system. You're not getting a lot of choice right now. What it's really similar to, I know he, he was using, uh, the package delivery services. What you've got right now is when your employer says, look, you're going to get blue shield, blue cross. That's all you're getting from us. And then you call them up and they say, well, here's your list of providers. And this is in network and you have to choose from this. This is like only being allowed to shop at one store. And that one store is only offering you a certain number of choices. You don't get all the choices in the world. You get the choices that that one store offers for you. And you don't have the option of going to another store. So right now we're very limited on our choices. And we're very limited, um, you know, so another point and this is what a lot of the candidates who are not really for Medicare for all need to understand is that if you continue to allow private insurance to compete in this market um, at the at the provider level, at the doctor's office, at the hospitals, the paperwork is not reduced. Now, all of a sudden, you know, they're still dealing with all of the insurance companies plus another one, right? They've got now an expanded Medicare system, plus they've got all of these various different insurance companies. So they're still dealing with the paperwork. Reducing that middleman and reducing that paperwork is essential to reducing medical costs. That's one of the aspects of reduction of that cost. Now, what do we do with all those employees? Well, Many of the plans call for retraining these employees or early retirement for some of these employees. But also, we're going to need more doctors. We're going to need more hospitals and more clinics because we're going to need because now everybody has the ability to get care rather than some people just going away and dying and becoming sick. We now would have a system where everybody could get care. That means we need more providers. So all of these people who are pushing paperwork on the insurance side could then maybe go and get a job at a clinic that's popping up because new ones will need to and they can start working on the, you know, the management side of those clinics or the paperwork side of the clinics. Because there, of course, would still be some paperwork, just not as much. Um, so reducing the paperwork at the insurance level and at the provider level with all of the different insurance companies is essential to reduction of the cost. Um, also, if you allow the private insurance to continue going, private insurance companies are, are going to take all the healthy people at really low prices. Um, and then it's that will leave the government with the government insurance company plan with all of the sick people. And that will surely bankrupt that system. It will 
make it fail. And that is ultimately what those who are against Medicare for all, that's what they want. They want the system to fail because they want to revert back to the private insurance companies the way that it was um, 10 years ago where many, many people quite literally and even still today uh, end up dying from their illnesses because they can't afford the care. So you're surely going to crash it. You're surely now you could say, well, we could put in some protections like we do now with the ACA, where private insurance companies can't deny people. They can't deny you for pre-existing conditions and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that is easily dismant- dismantled. And that is what those who oppose and those who work very diff- who work very hard f- on behalf of the insurance companies, they work very hard to oppose this. And they do try to dismantle these things. We've seen this already with the ACA, the slow chipping away at some of the various protections and uh, to keep the system going and to keep the system thriving. So you're going to see that chipping away. The system would surely crash. That's what the private insurance companies want. That's what the the people who accept uh, money from them want, all the the people in Congress who accept money from them. So that is a bad deal. We can't do that. We can't leave all of the sick people with the government and all the healthy people with private insurance companies. That's not the way this can work. So, um, you know... So Seth Moulton, you know, he's running for president, really flimsy on this. It's there's it, he sounds like a Republican, quite frankly, on this issue. And we've been able to prove for many years now why Medicare for all is a great system, why it would work for everybody. It would it would bring more competition. It would lower it would lower medical prices. It's all all around good. No one's talking about socialized medicine with having government run hospitals, clinics and, and doctors, even though that is what they do in the UK. And, you know, some critics will point at the UK and say, oh, we don't want their system. But, you know, when was the last time you went to England and you saw sick and dead people lying in the street? When was the last time you opened up British news and you read about all the sick and dying people? You don't read about that. You don't hear about that. Maybe it takes a little bit longer than it would here in the United States to for a, a non-emergency uh, surgery. But, you know, in order to ensure that the person who really legitimately has an emergency can get in, I, you know, I'm willing to I'm willing to wait. If that means an extra month, I'm willing to wait. If that means somebody who really desperately needs the care can get in before me. I think that's just a, a, a normal, humane thing to do. And I think if you were standing next to that person, quite literally, you would let them go into the doctor before you. If you saw that they were really, truly in need, you would say, please, please help them first. At least I would like to think that you would. So... You know, guys, Medicare for all is the only solution. That's it. We can't go half ass into it. We can't slide our way in or ease our way in. Uh, We've just got to go full bore Medicare Medicare for all. Now, if you want to phase it in year by year and say, okay, we're going to lower the age, lower the age, lower the age. And within three years, everybody has it. Okay, fine. But we got to do it. It's got to be full full steam ahead into it. None of this pansy, you know, around and saying, oh, no, competition. No, no, Seth Moulton. No, you're wrong. Everybody who agrees with you is wrong on this. We need Medicare for all, period.